What's going on guys welcome back in this little video today I want to show you a library that allows you to do fuzzy string matching in Python and this library has a funny name at least the older version because this library uh, had a certain name and then it was renamed now it's a different repository that is maintained uh, however it's called the current version is called the fuzz so this is what you want to install but if you look for examples online you're going to find some examples with the old name and the old name is fuzzy wuzzy so it is no longer maintained it's outdated but you might find some examples with that name we're going to install the fuzz or i have installed the fuzz already uh and this thing is based on something called python dash i'm not sure how it's pronounced 11 or 11 stein or stein whatever something like that uh, this is what this is based on. So the fuss is based on this library. And if you have some installation problems, of course, first of all, Google, but one fix that I had to do was I had to install the wheels as well. So once you're done with the installation process, what you need to do is you need to say from the fuss import, and then we're going to import fuss and we're going to import process. And I need to turn off the code pilot here. <clears throat> there you go. And essentially fuzzy string matching is like matching strings, like using regex and using uh, the equals operator, but in a fuzzy way. So it doesn't have to be exactly uh, the same string. So for example, what I can do in Python easily, is I can say s1 equals hello world, and I can say s2 equals hello world, but in lowercase completely. Uh, and these two strings are not the same. So I can go ahead and say print s1 is s2 or print s1 equals s2. And both are going to be wrong if I run this because they're not the same. Now, of course, I can do something like uh, s1 dot lower and all that. But then again, if I add an additional character or if I change, uh, you know, the space here, things get messy, it's not that simple to do it. So fuzzy string matching allows us to do this more efficiently, more easily in a fuzzy way. Uh, and one example for that is uh, if we have, I don't know, the, the let's, let's say we have string one is just a test and string two is just a test as well, but with, with a lowercase j. If we now go ahead and say print fuzz dot ratio, which gives us a metric for similarity, you could say s1 s2. This should give us a pretty high ratio. So 91 out of 100. So if they are exactly the same string, you're going to see that we have 100 here. So if we change something other than the case, for example, if we don't say just but just with an f, this is probably going to be no, it's still 91. Uh, but if the string is longer, for example, so if we don't just uh, change one character, but we say, and this is a long string, and this is a long string. Now, if I change a single character, it's not as important. So now you can see 97 is the score. So this is a very basic similarity measure. So I can also go ahead and change this to, uh, to short, it's still a very similar string. And because of that, the score is going to be very high. If I change this to something completely different, now there is going to be some similarity, probably, but it's going to be quite low. So 30, for example. Um, but this is just a simple ratio. This is nothing complicated. This is very simple. Uh, we can also go ahead and try something like the partial ratio and a partial ratio is basically the difference here is if I have this string just a test and if I have another string just a test and some more, they're going to not be um, very similar. They're going to have a score of 61. But if I change this to a partial ratio, we're going to get 100%. Why? Because this here is basically the same thing as that. And there's something in addition to that, but it doesn't really matter because we're looking at the partial ratio. So we're just looking at the individual parts. And if string one is completely present in string two, we get 100% here, but only 61 with the simple ratio. So this is a very simple thing. Um, 
What we can still not do with these two ratios is if we have strings that are quite similar but have a different order, for example, uh, what we can do is we can use a different metric. So let's say we have string one, uh, hello world is what I want to tell you. And then I say s2 is what I want to tell you is hello world. This is basically the same text, or it means the same thing. It has the same uh, words, maybe with a couple of case changes and so on. Uh, but essentially, it's the same string. Now, if we go ahead and print the fuzz dot ratio, they should be quite different. So s1 s2. If we print the partial ratio, they should also be quite different. Let's see. So 61 61. But if I go ahead now and say fuzz dot token sort ratio, this should be, I think 100%. There you go. Because it's essentially the same words, but in a different order. So this is what the sort is token sort, take the individual tokens and sort them doesn't really matter. Um, in what order they come, it's basically the same string. Now, if I change something here, like the tell to I don't know, some, then we're going to have a different number here. But essentially, this, this ratio here, doesn't care about the order of the individual tokens. And what we can also do here is um, if we have a string, hello world, and then we have a string, hello world, or let's call it hello, hello world, 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 like that, then the ratio is going to be quite different. The partial ratio is also going to be quite different because here we have hello world here we don't have I mean, actually, we have hello world. So maybe it's going to work. I'm not sure about that. Um, token sort ratio is also different because yeah, it, it has more words in it. But we also have something called the token set ratio. And a set basically contains each token just once. So it doesn't matter how often it occurs. So if I say token set ratio, s1 s2. Now I hope the other ones are not 100% as well. There you go, you can see pretty low scores here. And 100% here with a token set ratio because we have two tokens, hello and world and those are the tokens and two strings in both of the strings. Um, yeah. So what else do we have? We have stuff like fuzz dot partial token set ratio and partial uh, token sort ratio, basically self explanatory. What's interesting here to look at as well is not only the fuss, but also the process because the process is actually something that is useful uh, and can be used actually. Uh, and this is used to actually extract using this fuzzy matching from a collection, for example. So I have prepared a couple of lists here. Let me just copy paste this. Uh, if I have a couple of things, for example, and I hope you see that without me blocking it seems to work. Um, but we have a couple of things here, programming language, native language, react native, some stuff. Uh, some of them are quite similar, you could see native, native, programming, or actually language, language, stuff, stuff. Um, and now we can go ahead and pick the individual uh, best matches. So we can do that, of course, manually by just evaluating the score and then picking the top picks, but we can also do that with process. And in order to do that, we just have to say print process dot extract and we want to extract, for example, something like language. Um, and then we want to limit the matches or the extractions to two. So we only want to have two matches. Um, why is this underlined? Is there a problem? Let me just see if I can run this now. Oh, of course, I need to pass the collection as well. So the things. There you go. And in this case, native language and programming language were chosen. Um, if I go with something like a lang, it should also work. Uh, the problem that we have here is that this is not um, this is not AI. This is not NLP natural language processing. There's no intelligence behind this. It just looks at the individual tokens. So for example, if I go with programming, and I run this now, the first match is going to be obviously programming language, but the second one is going to be native language. Uh, and it's not going to be coding, even though we have coding because 
from the semantics, coding is closer, uh, closer to programming, but it doesn't really matter because we're not using AI here. We're not trying to understand, we're trying to match. So in this case, programming would not give us coding. Um, we can also go ahead and just extract one. This is just an additional method. It's basically uh, nothing special. So extract one programming things. And this will give us the top match. Um, and another example, the last example that I have for this video is, for example, how can this be useful? Let's say we have a couple of books. You can, of course, come up with your own examples here. I just have a couple of books, uh, which are actually my books, at least those here are my books and those are made up. Uh, let's say we have a huge library of books with, I don't know, uh, 10,000 books, not just, I don't know how many we have here, eight, nine, 10, not just 10 books, but 100, uh, 100,000 books, for example. And we want to find a book, but we don't know exactly what the name is. What we can do here is we can say print and then process dot extract. And then we can say, okay, give me uh, something about Python and data science. Now it doesn't really matter what the book is called because with an ordinary uh, with an ordinary contains or something like that or starts with or ends with we would not find this book here because it has Python and it has data science separately. What we want to have here is we want to find Python data science no matter how it occurs. And this is uh, the best match for this one. So what we can do here is we can say okay, from the books collection, with a limit, let's say we want to get uh, three best picks. And then um, we can also define a scorer because I think by default, I'm not sure what the default is, but it's not what we want to have. Because I think that right now, yeah, it gives us a very bad, uh, bad result. We want to have the scorer, let me do this in a new line. The scorer should be the fuss token sort ratio, we're just passing it, we're not calling it. And now we get this as the top result here. Uh, and we get some other data science book as the second result here. So this is actually pretty accurate. Um, and this also works, at least I think so if we change the token structure. So if I say science data, Python, this should still give us Yeah, there you go. This is the best result. So this is just a use case, it can be quite useful if you have a project where you have to find in a fuzzy way, this can be quite useful. And it can also be used to automate your own procedures like looking for files, structuring files, uh, whatever you want to do. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.